Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, the 13th of February, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, a former FBI advisor warns of implantable technology. Then, McDonald's asks, would you like a vaccine with that? And Viacom propaganda targets the alternative media. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And as the mainstream media is discredited, they're going to segue to Comedy Central and movies and drama. That's where the real propaganda is. Well, this first story is something that I alluded to earlier this week in another report. Basically, how are we going to protect ourselves from hackers if they are attacking a chip that's embedded directly under our skin, somewhere in our bodies? This is a very real possibility, and of course, nobody has the answer to that, but we're just going to go ahead and move forward with this type of technology. I had a lot of trolls there in the YouTube uh, comments saying, oh, that's not, that's impossible. Why are you fear mongering? Well, now an AI expert has come out warning that exact same thing. He says future hackers could wipe people's memories. This is top futurist and former advisor to the FBI and Interpol, Mark Goodman. He told Singularity Hub that neurohackers could kidnap hostages and threaten to delete their AI-enhanced brains in return for a ransom. He said, of course, this is all theoretical now. We don't have the capacity to do this, but he thoroughly believes that it will be forthcoming. Goodman pointed to recent experiments with EEG technology. It illustrates how brain waves could be read to obtain someone's credit card PIN number 30% of the time. So forget memorizing those passwords because that data can be pulled just from using a brain scan or people use uh, this, this new technology that's out there to just pull your data out of thin air. Um, but he also points to how they're using treatments for uh, veterans suffering with P uh, PTSD. Basically, they can isolate and minimize bad memories. So they would be able to use that knowledge to threaten to wipe somebody's lifelong memories of their wife or daughter if that ransom isn't paid up. So this is a very real possibility. It's coming sooner than we all believe, and nobody really has any idea what, what to do about it. But, you know, if you think about it, it's not really you or I that's probably going to have to worry about this right away because it's the elites that want to upload their brains uh, to live infinitely in cyberspace. And, of course, they're going to be the ones that have the money to pay off that hefty ransom. Might be a little poetic justice there. But until then, all of our minds are already being manipulated and controlled. We can avoid it as much as we want, avoid television, avoid the uh, you know mainstream media and all of that. But since the advent of television, this whole mind control, they've been quite successful at it. Um, you know, obviously we watch commercials and stuff and we know that they can easily program us to want a genetically modified hamburger, even though we're not even hungry. They just know how to put that, those images and those sounds and it's like the perfect hour of the night and it, it makes people just want to go run to Mickey D's. Uh, just like they can flash something on screen to associate an idea with a specific agenda. We've seen this again and again. They've attacked Alex Jones and Infowars specifically. Um, they've been, we've been featured in a plethora of video games as well as movies, entertainment releases. There was some pedophile uh, in a movie last year that came out and his name was Alex Jones so conveniently. Um, yeah, there was another mainstream media news outlet that had a picture of a red-faced Alex Jones uh, with the word racist, and the news anchor was like, we've got to get rid of these people, even though they didn't give any example whatsoever of Alex saying anything racist, but they were just using his picture to just associate people with that idea, associate Alex with that idea. Many, many examples. Well, now, this is just came in from an unofficial InfoWars reporter, Adam Green. Yes, you can send us in your well-produced reports, and if we like your story, we will air it. Uh, but anyway, he points out how Comedy Central is part of the ongoing demonization campaign against InfoWars and Alex Jones. Uh, they used an InfoWars clone website in one of their programs. The mainstream media's propaganda campaign to marginalize Alex Jones and Infowars continues to be deployed in full force and on all fronts. 
But the latest attack did not come from the usual suspects, MSNBC, Media Matters, Salon.com, or Fox News. Apparently, the mainstream media believes it's just not enough to demonize and lie about Infowars in the news alone. The attacks must also cross over into entertainment, where the audience lets their guard down and are more susceptible to the conditioning. A recent episode of Comedy Central's show Broad City, aired February 11, 2015, featured an unfavorable cameo of the Infowars website. The episode begins with a quick shot of the main character's computer. Here it is. What is in the box, actually? It's only two seconds, and it goes by very fast. Here it is again. It was quick, but it says Michael Jackson lives in Richard Branson's space condo. The header on the fictitious website says Conspiracy Wars which is clearly an exact replica of InfoWars' website. This is more than just a harmless, meaningless joke. It is a carefully placed subconscious mind conditioning technique. The producers of the show went out of their way to create a fake website to condition their audience. They associate an outrageous headline with the image of InfoWars' trademark website header, which then gives their viewers a subliminal input that InfoWars is an unbelievable and untrustworthy news source. This quick subliminal message may be enough to dissuade someone from reading an InfoWars article they may come across without them even knowing why. This isn't the first time Alex Jones has been demonized through subliminals in entertainment. In 2013, a movie called Prisoners came out starring Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal. The antagonist in the movie was a child abductor rapist conveniently named Alex Jones. Some people may object and say these are no big deal or they're just coincidences, but when you consider the mainstream media's repeated dishonest attacks on Infowars, the war on Alex Jones becomes overtly clear. I'm Adam Green, reporting unofficially for Infowars.com. Make sure to subscribe below to No More News and catch the sneak preview to my upcoming documentary film, The Conspiracy Theory Conspiracy. When three Muslims were gunned down by a white guy in Chapel Hill, North Carolina this week, immediately the headlines were saying hate crime, domestic terrorism, but all of that abruptly came to an end and all of a sudden it was murder over a parking dispute. Why is that? Well, this is from Joseph Farah at World Net Daily. He says, because Craig Hicks, the suspect who's charged in the murders, is an atheist, a fan of the Southern Poverty Law Center. He likes N MSNBC's Rachel Maddow, the science guy Bill Nye. He likes same-sex marriage groups and the Freedom From Religion Foundation. So he is immune to the label. And he hasn't even been charged with a hate crime because after all, we know that progressives aren't haters, right? So here again, we see another example of the Southern Poverty Law Center being linked to an actual act of domestic terror with multiple murders. And yet again, it's Tea Partiers and conservatives and Christians who represent the real threat to America. Why is that? Back it up. But even when they can't pin the blame in such a way, they can still find some way to spin it to fit their agenda. And this is courtesy of the Daily Beast. They say, parking dispute or hatred of Muslims, we still don't know what motivated the slaying of three young people in Chapel Hill, but this is certain. The murder weapon was a handgun. The weapon that changed everything was almost certainly the one that Hicks was licensed to carry thanks to the prevailing reading of the Second Amendment. And they go on to point out how he had no criminal record, never had any apparent psychological issues. He was just a self-prescribed, grumpy old man. And of course, he was a white guy too, a white guy with a gun. So even if he is a progressive and has all of these liberal ideas, that right there is the domestic, he fits the bill of the domestic terrorist being a grumpy white guy with a gun. Now, they gloss over the fact that he termed himself a gun-toting liberal on Facebook, uh, and they just focus on his alleged obsession with a movie uh, about a man who snaps and goes on a shooting spree. And they take this from an ex-girlfriend of his who says that he was obsessed with this movie. You know, what does that mean? Did he watch it over and over again, or did he just really like it? Was he a fan? But either way, they're not going to let this tragedy go to waste. If they can't pinpoint it on a conservative, then they're going to just pull in what is the common denominator there, uh, the weapon. And 
it's, it's almost as if they want to act like no one was ever killed before guns were invented, as if we don't have mass stabbings going on. Um, but we know that gun grabbing has been the agenda for quite some time, and the only way that they're going to be able to do that is to continually program the mass of citizenry here in America to do away with guns. They're doing a very good job on it with Common Core, hitting the youth, basically rewriting the Second Amendment so kids growing up these days have no idea how America was even founded and why and how we got here. Um, but basically, it's just all about programming the populace to hand over the guns. And luckily for them, they've got this mass programming under control because they've been working on it for quite some time. I give the CIA a total credit for sponsoring and initiating the entire consciousness movement, counterculture events of the 1960s. Psychological warfare is described by Webster's Dictionary as the use of propaganda, threats, and other psychological techniques to mislead, intimidate, demoralize, or otherwise influence the thinking or behavior of an opponent. The Nazis referred to it as the worldview attack. I speak for the unnamed brave millions homeward bound to take up the challenge of that future which they did so much to salvage from the brink of disaster. After the Allied victory in Europe of World War II on May 8, 1945, the Office of Strategic Services, the intelligence agency formed during World War II, conducted Operation Paperclip a program in which over 1,500 Nazi German scientists, technicians, and engineers were smuggled into the United States. President Truman's order concerning Operation Paperclip expressly excluded anyone even remotely associated with the Nazi party. However, the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, a subcommittee of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, expunged from public record all Nazi party affiliations in regards to the German scientists. From this exodus of evil sprung a variety of mind control operations. And that was just a little snippet from a very hard hitting piece coming from John Bowne. We're going to have the full report in its entirety coming next Tuesday. You're not going to want to miss that. It's all about MK Ultra programs going way back. Now, if you are looking for some last minute Valentine's plans, look no further. McDonald's has got you covered. The Golden Arches in Tampa, Florida are offering sweethearts an opportunity to create your own McMemories. One location is going to be transformed into a sit-down restaurant with candles and tabletop flowers. And the counter employees are going to be retrained as waiters, offering table service and refills. And lucky you, they're going to be accepting phone reservations. Who says romance is dead? But that's not all Mickey D's is planning on uh, pumping out at their restaurants. Several McDonald's locations across the nation are reportedly offering free vaccines with their fast food. So would you like a side of a hepatitis A shot with your Happy Meal? <laughs> uh, this is obviously pretty bizarre considering that they've had record financial uh, downfall as millions of people are becoming very aware of all of the synthetic uh, ingredients that are in their food. So now they're going to directly inject people with synthetic laden booster shots. Line up for that. Now, coming up later in the show, Alex Jones is going to be in studio uh, with Rob Dew and our producer, Marcos Morales. They're going to be adding their voice to the vaccine debate with a very personal story of how it affected their children. Um, but first, we want to give you an update on what's going on with ISIS. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. 
we have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com Oil of Oregano Formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market. Sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 just one day after Obama asked Congress to authorize an expansion of the war against ISIS in Syria and Iraq, ISIS has captured the very city where Marines are training Iraqi troops. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now today we got word that the Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq has been attacked by a group of ISIS insurgents. Now at the base, they currently have anywhere from 300 to 320 U.S. Marines, devil dogs, holding their ground in that area. Now what that base is being used for right now is a training ground for the U.S. Marines to help get these Iraqi forces prepared, armed, and trained to fight the ISIS insurgents who have now closed in and taken over 90% of the al-Baghdadi uh, city, which is uh, northwest of Baghdad. So you have Baghdad, Fallujah, Ramadi, then you make a right up the Euphrates on the road and you'll see al-Baghdadi. But the thing is though, it's about 20, 25 miles from al-Baghdadi down to the Al-Assad Air Base. So that's a straight shot, a straight road. I just checked the map. I'm gonna put up the picture here in a second so you can see where that is. But here are some of the headlines about what's going on today. This is from the Examiner, U.S. Marines in danger in Iraq as ISIS sees this town of al-Baghdadi. Well, this is the thing. I don't really fear for the Marines. I know these guys, my dad was one, my brother, my best friend. These guys know what they're doing. Trained to fight and they will not back down. The thing is though, is the president is looking for a war. He wants another three-year contract. He wants to send a limited amount of troops into Iraq. Now, if something like this happens, a bad thing like this happens, and these guys, God forbid, something happens to this base and it gets taken over, that's going to spark fear in a lot of Americans, and they're going to be up in arms and ready, and everyone's going to be screaming war and thirsty for blood, and then they're going to get the go-ahead, and Congress is going to go, yeah, let's do this, and they're going to go and send all these troops in, and we're going to be stuck in another war yet again. Hopefully, the right thing will be done, and they'll send in like an AC-130 Spectre gunship, and they'll bomb the hell out of that area and take ISIS out, and we can be done with this, and we can go back to our normal everyday lives, but I don't see that happening with the corrupt government that we have. Another Fox News headline is failed ISIS raid tests U.S. forces in Iraq. Now this is the thing, when I was over there, these kind of guys, they like to send out what we call probes. They probe, they attack you, you know, with uh, small arms fire, suicide bombers around your perimeter and see how you react. They look at your TTPs, your tactics, what you do when you react to an attack at your base and they take notes of that and they go back and they make another plan to see if they found any weaknesses and how you reacted so hopefully these guys are on point which i'm sure they are because like i said the u.s marines are badass so i'm sure they're going to be on their game and isis right now scratching their head and now baghdadi going maybe this was the wrong mistake i shouldn't have messed with the devil dogs here's another uh headline in daily mail isis fighters wearing iraqi uniforms 
uh, attack Iraqi base. Like I said, they were using suicide bombers as well. So this is what's going on right now. It's an ongoing story. So everyone keep their uh, prayers for these Marines out there and the Iraqi forces who are going to be fighting. Like I said, this is a probe, which means there'll probably more attacks to come. Let's just hope that our government for once will do the right thing and give these guys the air assets they need. But we do know that lower flying altitude uh, type aircraft like Kiowas, Apaches, uh, smaller planes aren't going to be able to go in that area because we know ISIS has the capabilities to shoot with missiles and take down planes just like what happened with the Jordanian pilot. So hopefully, like I said, they send in something like a Warthog or an AC-130 Spectre gunship and just wipe these guys off the map. Stay tuned for more reports. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. So if this is all true, the capture of the Marines will undoubtedly provide sufficient impetus for Obama's authorization of military force. This includes the use of ground troops. The authorization is going to last three years, and there are no geographical limitations on the use of that military force. According to NBC News, 54 percent of Americans say that they want their member of Congress to vote for this authorization. Now, Marines were evacuated from Yemen earlier this week as well. They were forced to surrender their weapons to Houthi rebels. This was how CNN initially reported that. But the Marine Corps has issued statement after statement rebutting these claims. They say that they were forced to destroy their weapons with sledgehammers in the airport parking lot. They were forced to remove bolts from their personal small arms in order to render them inoperable. And then prior um, to turning them over to these Yemeni security personnel, leaving them behind in the 20 some cars that Houthi rebels then seized. Now, a Pentagon spokesperson initially told reporters that the Marines had to leave the weapons behind because they had to board a chartered commercial flight. But of course, we know that the Marines fly that way all the time and they're able to bring their weapons. So something here doesn't quite add up. Obviously, we never get the entire story. But another thing that doesn't really add up a lot of the time is what happens to a lot of these weapons. Perhaps they're not being seized by rebels, uh, but a lot of times they are abandoned. And then sometimes we take the excess killing machines and give them to other government agencies. Who's allowed to fly model planes and helicopters in America? Well, the answer used to be anyone, but not anymore. We're going to take a look at the legal argument that the FAA has used that could be extended even to Frisbees. And we've got an InfoWars exclusive look at a Freedom of Information document that shows who was using Predator drones and Reapers domestically in America in 2014 while the FAA was cracking down on model planes. Last November, the FAA asserted its authority to prohibit anything, quote, invented, used, or designed to navigate or fly in the air, unquote. And it's busy regulating unmanned aerial vehicles under 55 pounds into extinction. There's a story that closely parallels what's going on at street level, where the government puts cameras everywhere to watch everything the public does, but prohibits us from even filming government buildings, and where cops arrest people who film them in public. You see, the government must see everything, but we should be blind. They need to know everything, but we should not be informed about anything that they're doing. It's just been announced that this giant tethered blimp will monitor an area the size of Texas. And we're told that it's for cruise missiles that may be shot at us. But then they say it's for downward looking views. And we see a FOIA request reveals that, quote, the technology was specifically designed to integrate a very high definition video to track and identify people and vehicles in a three mile radius, unquote. But of course, we're being paranoid if we suggest that this technology will be used for what it was designed for. And while the government's paranoid surveillance knows no bounds, the public, of course, should have no cameras in the air. And any irresponsible use of a drone by an individual is used by the government as well as the media to call for a blanket prohibition of citizens having drones shutting down competition to the media companies, as well as shutting down a technology that could be used as a check on government abuse of power. When the FAA first asserted rules for model planes last November, it was only just four. And now we see just a few months later, the FAA has already expanded it to 33 detailed rules. That's the way bureaucracy metastasizes like a cancer. And it's the way big business keeps out startup competition. We've already seen how it works. Raphael Perker was hired to do a promotional aerial video for the University of Virginia. 
The FAA said that he operated without a license and he had flown recklessly close to buildings, cars, and pedestrians. They fined him $10,000. He pointed out that it was a five-pound styrofoam model airplane and he hadn't hit anyone or anything and he'd caused no damage and no injury. But the FAA wasn't going to be stopped that easily. They argued that their ancient statute defined aircraft as, quote, anything invented, used, or designed to navigate or fly in the air. The judge at the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, said there was no enforceable FAA rule that he violated. And he added that the FAA was trying to exert authority over anything that moved through the air, including even, quote, a paper airplane or a toy balsa wood glider. The judge threw out the fine and slapped down the FAA's power grab. So government bureaucrats said that other government bureaucrats could regulate even paper airplanes, even Frisbees if they want. And after months of legal battles, he finally agreed to pay a reduced fine of $1,100, and the FAA got what it really wanted, a precedent. And now they're off to see how quickly they can shut down the public treating a five-pound styrofoam drone as if it was a predator drone, treating a drone flown in downtown Manhattan the same as they would a drone flown over a private ranch in rural Texas. But let's forget about these little toy drones. What about real drones, serious surveillance and attack drones? They're already in the hands of Homeland Security and many federal bureaucracies for use in the United States domestically. This FOIA request given to InfoWars shows that there were just under 700 FAA licenses for UAVs to be used in the U.S. And virtually all those licenses are in the hands of the military, law enforcement, environmental surveillance and mapping, and of course, universities. In other words, the military industrial complex. They'll be monitoring your activity from the air with agricultural spying, with police spying, with tax authority spying, with the EPA spying on you, just to name a few. The BLM is even being given Department of Defense surplus drones that originally cost $250,000 so they can map out resources. Because those might be of interest to the corporate patrons of senators like Harry Reid. They can look for violations of new environmental rules and then steal the land from private landowners using excessive regulatory fines. And of course, the BLM doesn't need a certificate of authorization from the FAA to fly. It operates under a memorandum of understanding. So these BLM drones don't need no stinking license from the FAA. And so that's in addition to 11 drones being used by the USDA and the Department of Interior in this FOIA request. But we can see from this FOIA request there are a huge number of military drones that are permitted for domestic use. Perhaps they're solely for training, perhaps not. Homeland Security has 10 Predator B drones. The Department of Defense calls them MQ-9 Reapers, and the manufacturer describes them as Hunter Killers. Customs and Border Patrol, which operates under Homeland Security, has another six Hunter Killer Reaper drones. So this one document shows that DHS has 16 Hunter Killer drones for domestic use. Why? And it's not cheap for Homeland to fly their Reaper drones. $8,000 per hour, according to the House Intelligence Committee. So they spy on you and send you the bill, but you better not fly your five-pound styrofoam plane because you just might get pictures of what our government is doing. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an extremely important public service announcement update. Please take notes, check out the claims we're about to make here for yourself so that you can protect yourself, your family, and those around you. This is so critical what's happening right now. There is a massive push across the world, a huge PR campaign to arrest people that don't vaccinate their children, to forcibly inoculate, to not let people travel, uh, to publish the names and addresses of people that don't vaccinate as if they're pedophiles or something. This is a huge push, and this is happening right now because Merck whistleblowers and head CDC doctors and others are going public and saying the vaccines are linked to autism. We covered it up. And so you're seeing a huge push now saying measles, measles, you know, everybody's going to die. Take vaccines. They're safe and effective. No side effects. No problems. Arrest whoever says that they're bad because this is an establishment meltdown. I recently interviewed Dr. Wakefield, his partner, uh, top uh, doctor when it comes to the stomach and intestines in England, has been exonerated and given his medical license back. And the court completely censured uh, the British... Uh, regulators that had basically lynched Wakefield and his partner. What we're looking at is a system that is in meltdown right now, and they're in meltdown for a number of reasons. You can only sustain a lie, a falsehood for so long. And now that Dr. William Thompson, senior CDC scientist, has come forward and said that they have known for 13 years that MMR vaccine is causally associated with autism, and they have hidden it from the public, from doctors, from public health officials, from everybody. They've kept it to an inner circle of people who knew the truth all along and have allowed millions of children to be put in harm's way in the interim. So you got whistleblowers from the inside in the US coming out and saying these vaccines are dangerous. You've got Wakefield, who they always say has been discredited. You know, vaccines are perfectly safe. That research was bogus. That's all a PR hoax. So they're doubling and tripling down with forced inoculations, uh, with the claim that it's going to be the law that you've got to take shots, and they're adding hundreds of new vaccines. See, 30, 40 years ago, you only got five or six vaccines. Now it's over 50. They want it to be over 100. Autism's gone from one in 25,000 30 years ago to one in less than 60. It's projected by 2025 to be one out of 10. This is the big global crisis. This is about medical tyranny. Now, the big pharma complex is striking back. They've doubled and tripled down. We, the people, need to strike back. And everyone who has been vaccine damaged or whose children have been vaccine damaged needs to go to YouTube and other platforms and do a testimonial video. Uh, and I suggest you use your name, your information, you show pictures of your children. We need to warn others so that they understand just how dangerous this is. Because with my uncle that almost got killed with a tetanus shot, they told him, yeah, the shot did it. The doctors did. With Marcos Morales, our live news director, same thing happened to his child. Uh, and the doctor admitted it to him. But they want to isolate us. They want to keep us quiet. They want to arrest us. They want to publish our names and, and shame us like we're in a sex child registry or something 
because we're speaking out against vaccines or don't take vaccines. None of my three children have been vaccinated. And it's because I have so many friends and family who have 10, 15, 20-year-old children that are still in diapers, screaming and yelling in pain every day with incredible intestinal problems from the vaccines. And there's going to be more and more victims now. We've got to not just sit here quietly while this Holocaust goes on. This is a, a do or die moment. It's absolutely crucial in the history of this country and indeed the world of who prevails. Who do your children actually belong to? And if we do not get uh, William Thompson before a congressional series of committees that unearth the precise nature and extent of the fraud at the CDC and how they... That's the big whistleblower. That is the big whistleblower. Then if we do not do that, and if we lose this battle, your children, you, will be owned by the pharmaceutical industry and your children and your children's children. Slavery. And they are simply a marketplace for those companies. They are quantified in terms of vaccination for every birth in how much revenue they will generate for the pharmaceutical industry in a mandated program for which there is no r real recourse to any kind of compensation or litigation if your children are harmed. So they want to take away your rights as to whether your children should be vaccinated or not according to your decision. But if your child is harmed and vaccines are, according to the Supreme Court, unavoidably unsafe then you are left to pick up the pieces. The inserts are clear that it can give you diabetes, Guillain-Barre, narcolepsy, uh, death, uh, pancreatitis. Everything that we know is happening to the children is all in the insert. But the news will never tell you about these. Now, the reason we're doing this special report is it hit me. I was back in the control room talking to Marcos Morales and others about the scourge of vaccines. He was shaking his head and he said, yeah, I really don't want to talk about this, but, but, but Darren McBreen says I really should. Uh, my uh, first child, well, he's going to tell you the story, got the vaccines. They gave her a whole bunch at once, and it was incredibly painful, and she got incredibly sick, and, and the doctor told him, oh, that's just normal. They don't even deny it now. And what's happening is there's brain inflammation, IQ is being damaged, and girls are tougher than boys, uh, genetically. Any doctor will tell you that. That's why 80-plus percent of the autistic children are boys. But he has daughters. So Marcos is going to tell you a story because he's reluctant, but he says he needs to do it, he wants to do it, he's a behind-the-scenes guy, because he wants to warn you to know the facts and to not believe the mainstream media, the Brian Williams types. And then I want to challenge everybody out there, again, who's been damaged or who has had problems, to tell your story. Be heard. Say, we're not intimidated by big pharma and by the PR firms. We're standing up. We're taking action. And good people inside government and corporations are going public. And everything that Alex Jones and Wakefield and Dr. Blaylock and countless other people have said, it turns out, is accurate. I mean, even Harvard studies admit that fluoride's lowering IQs. But they don't want you to read the fine print, ladies and gentlemen but they legally have to tell you this. But when you go get your shots, they're not offering it to you because it comes with the ampule itself, the multi-dose vial. So again, we're gonna launch a whole initiative and we're gonna air some of these on air on the radio and TV shows so that other people will start a chain reaction of telling their stories. They wanna keep this quiet. And that's why they know that people are waking up to them. So they're really pushing now, that's their answer to shutting down this 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 avalanche of truth that's hitting them. Marcos, first off, you've been here around, what, three and a half years? About three and a half years, yes. Well, you're, the launch of the nightly news. Well, you're a good friend of mine. I'm over here you're customarily uh, ranting, but, but, but how could we not rant knowing this and seeing this huge push? First off, what do you make of all the stuff we're seeing in the media, the talk of publishing names, arresting people, uh, the bullying, the terrorist tactics, and then tell us the story uh, I mean, your wife's a nurse. Tell us the story of your oldest child and what happened. Well, uh, one of the problems with the uh, the uh, propaganda in the public these days is that uh, it's turning a lot of people's minds into into buying into it. I know people who are def deftly against the uh, the uh, transvaginal ultrasound when they were trying to regulate it, and uh, it's under the guise of I didn't want so the government putting something in my body that I didn't want there. And these same people are for forced vaccinations. And I would tell them, you can't take that out of your body. You're for the government putting something in your body 
when you can't take it out. And this is the and government being able to put in our body whatever they want in these so-called vaccines. And they've got liability protection. I mean, how creepy is that? It's creepy. And the uh, my way to fight back, as you said, I'm, I'm reluctant to be on camera. I'm not a... I'm behind the camera talent usually, but. But hopefully you'll spur others to have the courage because we got to stand up for these children. My way to fight back was I would give people in factual information. I would give them the articles with the, the studies, the data, and nothing really rang true with them unless my personal side came out. And then I would say, well, you know, when, when my first child came, the second time we, we uh, visited the doctor, we went a little later than our date. So we were going to. The doctor said that we had to put four vaccines in that day because I'd missed the other two. And I was, you know, I was a first time parent. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't do my homework, obviously. And so I went along with it. And then that night, uh, my wife was working overnights at the time. So I had my daughter by myself and she just, just out of control, just started crying. Her eyes were bright red. Her head was on fire and she was inconsolable inconsolable for almost three days. And into the first night, her fever spiked 103.7. 104 is when you go to the hospital. I knew at least that much. And I, so I called around then and uh, I was told that, that it was fine, that it was normal. This was a normal reaction. So I had to get the doctor on the phone and tell them this was happening. My daughter is having this adverse reaction. The hospital says that's what happens when you get vaccines and the doctor concurred, hmm. yeah, no, this is a normal reaction. Including death. And I, so I said, well, if that's a normal reaction, then I'm not doing that ever again to my child. She suffered for almost three days, inconsolable, to the point where she couldn't cry anymore. She was, her tears were dried up, her body was worn out, and she just whimpered and laid there. And For those I that don't know, when, when adults are given a bunch of shots at once, the military, uh, I've talked to troops that have described it when they're given like three or four shots at once, burning, uncontrollable migraine headache. And that's why you see these kids. Rob Dew was telling the story. In fact, I didn't even tell him I was going to do this. Somebody go grab Rob, bring him in here. Because we're having these behind-the-scenes right discussions there. that are so real, they would wake people up. He'll be at the playground and see, like, some two-year-old flipping out, acting crazy, one of his neighbors. And they go, I don't know what happened. She's never acted like this. Or he's never acted like this. And Rob goes, did you go to the doctor? And they're like, yeah, we went yesterday. Did you get shots? And they're like, how did you know? Because we know, and until a few years ago, if your daughter would have had convulsions, they would have taken her from you. Or if she had died, they would have indicted you because they do a Causing CAT scan, injury. blood on the brain. Your, body, your daughter had a huge autoimmune response. I'm not a brain surgeon. Dr. Blaylock is and exposes that. Right. Uh, I guess you're talking to his mic, Robert. Yeah, yeah. I mean, tell. It's the new normal now. You know, your kid's flailing on the playground and she's kind of laughing about it, going, oh, we don't know what's wrong. Uh, ha, ha. And, and I just go, well, did y'all just go to the doctor? She goes, yeah, we, we took her last week. She just got back from, you know, she went to the doctor last week. Uh, oh, okay. And I said, has she ever acted like that before? No, this is the first time she started acting like this. Two-year-old baby. And you told the rest of the story. You asked about vaccines? Yeah, well, and then I said, is she getting all of her shots? And they're like, oh, yeah, she's right on schedule. So it's the fact that the parents don't even see the, disc, the, the connection between the bad behavior. Because she goes, she's never acted like this before. She'd just gone to the doctor. And this is what happens. I've even I've looked at studies of people that said the vaccines are safe. And in the epilogue, the doctor writes, I've taken through uh, my first two kids. They both had seizures after the shot. But I'm going to take my third one to get the shot. And I'm going to give them Tylenol beforehand. That's their solution. And here's the deal, because these aren't vaccines. They're adding brain-altering systems, the anti-stress type vaccines that are viruses. We'll put the articles up that go in and actually eat part of the brain. This is population control. It's what's in eco-science. And it's so big that they may win because it's so over the top. How do you deal with this? How do you deal with one in 25,000 having autism 30 years ago and now it's one in 50-something? How do you deal with the magnitude of my mother almost died from a flu shot? They admitted. The thing is, you said the doctor said this is normal. This See, that's the new reaction. thing, because they'll say on the news, no side effects, no problem. But you go, hey, doctor, it says it could make me have a convulsions, uh, uh, destroy my pancreas and give me diabetes. It says it all right here. And they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Pneumonia. Pneumonia is one of the side effects. Uh, you know? Get measles from the measles shot. People yeah. spreading the measles. Most of them have had shots. And they'll say in the back of the paper, yeah, we don't know why people are getting the flu shot and then dying of the flu. Yeah, of the same strain that they're supposedly vaccinated against. The same exact strain that they're being injected with, they die from.
In and psych warfare, the, the connection. I was talking to a globalist off record once, and they said, Alex, you understand, you think people adapt and evolve, right. adapt, overcome, you know, what the military talks about, is a good thing. We use the public adapting to bad things, and, they, and people will, will go along with it. And he sort of explained to me, basically laughing at me, uh, when I was flying to New York once on a first class flight uh, to be on The View. And I mean, I looked the guy up. He was like the head of a major bank. Not one of the big six, but one right tier below that. People don't understand this is a multi generational attack. This is something that has been going on for about 60, 70 years. And they just keep every year, they change the schedule, they up the dosage. And it's little bits, but we've seen, and it's happened really bad since the 80s, the late 80s. When Rain Man came out to normalize autism and make it seem like it's kind of cool. And they normalize breast cancer. Right. Yeah, it's oh, up cool. three, four thousand percent, but we're having a run for it. And we're not gonna ask why it's increasing. It's up to you folks. Rob Dew can't do it all. Marcos Morales can't do it all. Alex Jones can't do it all. Kit Daniels can't do it all. Uh Don Salazar can't do it all. Uh, you know, all our crew back there, John Bound, uh, Darren, we need you to tell your story, especially about the doctors admitting it. Because I mean, my dad wouldn't vaccinate me, and he's an oral surgeon and a, and a dentist and a, you know, has a degree in chemistry and all this other stuff, and he wouldn't do it because he said they usually don't protect you even if it's a clean vaccine and it lowers your immune system. He said, I would only take it if there was something super deadly like polio running around and only if it was already rampant, but he goes, you know your grandmother got polio from the polio shot. So I went and asked her. She goes, yeah, I got it a month after. She was given the shot. And then she got the strain she'd been vaccinated for a month later and is on crutches at age 89 today. So, so this affects me. My mother used to run triathlons. This is like 20 years ago. And they told everybody on the team, get your flu shot because we're having a triathlon come up next month. Uh, you know, she was on UT Masters swimming. She was in bed for like two weeks. Just, just uh, almost killed her. Yep. Uh, my uncle, uh, Joe, Joe Jones, uh, almost killed him. The doctor said, yeah, you had a bad reaction to tetanus shot. Face swole up, hands swole up. What are they? I mean, everyone I know. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I haven't, I haven't had the flu shot myself since high school, by the way. And I got the flu every year in high school that I got the flu shot. And then once I moved out, went to college, never took the flu shot again. I haven't had the flu since. I've had, you know. Uh, well, the, the Canadian government virus, study, but never. It lowers your immunity by fifty percent for an entire year when you take the regular flu shot. It's up to you to call into talk radio with your stories. It's up to you. If you don't know how to do a YouTube, go to your grandson or your neighbor or, or, or your brother. Start do talking. it. Speak out. The journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. I started 23 years ago trying to get on air. After three years, I got on air. Now I reach 20 million people a week conservatively. And I just didn't like them trying to pass laws that under 18 couldn't shoot guns with their parents, yeah. couldn't go hunting, uh, that they were trying to take people's private property. I never tended to be on air. I never intended to do all this. I just went out there. And you can do it too. I'm not saying you want to go this far. Maybe some of you will go further. Just tell the story. And, and you know what? If vaccines have been great for you, keep it up. Just, just enjoy yourself. But at least read the insert because I'll be in a restaurant and I will see someone with an air tank on being wheeled in that looks like they're about to die. And they've got people. And I, and I, and I saw this woman walk over the other woman. She goes, Hi, how you doing, Blair? That was her name. Have you got your flu shot? She's like, yeah, I got the flu shot. She's like 50 years old or something, so she's about to die. And I, I'll be in restaurants. It's like a cult now. All these really unhealthy looking people. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, I got my shot. I got my shot. Come on, I got, I got to have heart surgery. Come on. I mean, it's just, they just think they're getting some, and they're like, doing what's right. Not going to get other people sick. Herd immunity. Herd immunity. Herd immunity. The government, hello, is going to force stuff in us. It's going to start a civil war. Yeah. I've never called for violence, and I'm not calling for violence now, but it's violent to force something on people that we know hurts them. In India and Africa and everywhere else, they've caught the UN forcibly inoculating, sterilizing people. This is like coming at you with a gun, but it soft kills you. Okay? So I'm not for offensive violence, but I'm telling you, they want to start a civil war. This is the way it's going to be. And the media people, and the bureaucrats and the medical people and the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and Bill Gates up to this to his eyeballs are trying to make this forced. McDonald's giving out the free, you know, vaccines with Happy Meals. Mm -hmm. You are going to be held accountable. I know the Nazis got caught because they used guns and everybody could see they were killing people. You just give us shots and we go off and die later. No, we know we're ringing the alarm bell and we know what you're doing. And I just want to say this.
we're three dads here. We all have kids. And it's not that we're medical scientists. We're not professionals in the medical field. All we did, read the inserts, read the studies, read what other people have researched, and look at the connections. We're not doing anything spectacular. The doctor told you it was the vaccine. It was yeah. a normal response. And, she and came back, thank God. I was, was a lucky one. Absolutely. She would have been a boy, probably, I mean, autistic. Could have been. Could have been. Because boys can't handle it. It's so epic, though. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's so wild. It's bio-warfare. We're undergoing bio-warfare in the name of these giant pharmaceutical companies to make us customers for life. Because when you're debilitated by these, you may not have autism. You may have severe allergies. You may have Crohn's disease. How many people out there have Crohn's disease who also got their vaccine? And they never used to have that. No. All these new diseases. Uh, pediatric cancer of over 10,000 percent. It's all gut. It's all in the gut. And it's all attacking As the Dr. System. Wakefield with the top uh, gut doctor found. That's why they targeted him because the government already had two studies in yep. England and they already knew we're trying to cover it up. It's criminal. He hit on it. Yeah. Like, and it's all to protect. My God, Watson, we have them. They're like, no, Mr. Holmes. Listen, we have a lot more money and we're going to destroy you. That's what they did. That's well, what they but did. he's rising like the phoenix. Oh, yeah, he's, he's been exonerated. Here, here's what we need to do. I want to make this a featured video right. on the YouTube channel. I want it on InfoWars, Prison Planet, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. Because it seems like if something super important, it doesn't get pushed. And I want this video to get out there. Folks, we can do it together. Tell your testimony. Expose what's happening. Band together. Uh, and let your doctor know. What my dad says is go in with a consent form to them saying they'll take responsibility. Right. When the school lies to you and says it's the law. See, they're liars. Say, here, sign this consent form that you waive uh, any liability for me and that you'll pay for everything. They won't do it. This is how you take down a society, how you medicalize the culture, how you make everybody sick, and then the socialist health care of government comes in, federalizing everything to basically reclamate and tear down the system. This is the military attack on America and the rest of the world. This is the heart of their program, and it's why they're pushing so hard right now. So get your testimony out today. Take action. Write articles. Post it on your Facebook, Twitter, however you want to communicate Get your stories out and keep telling them. Because I read on our YouTubes, uh, you know, uh, people that have been damaged are just annihilating the trolls mm -hmm. because they're like, hey, listen, my son's brain damage after the shot. They admitted it. And we settled in court. I mean, it's just bam, 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 bam. I mean, this is real. And this could bring down the entire New World Order. Since, since the late 80s, Alex, the uh, vaccine company, the vaccine court has paid out over $2.6 billion in damages to people. It's a if they're court. so safe and effective, it wouldn't be, they wouldn't be paying out $2.6 billion. Okay? It's not safe and effective. It is a chemical attack. Chemical bio warfare from the same government that, that, that used to just shoot the blacks up with syphilis straight away. And don't, and, and, and dads out there, you're going to get this information. We have a lot more male viewers than females, and you're going to go up against your wives who are been programmed to accept the medical tyranny. You have to do your education and be patient. It does work. If you keep giving them the facts, you can turn this around. You can even convince your doctor that what they're doing we is We need to wrong. get serious. I mean, people almost need to get FM transmitters that broadcast over a neighborhood and just run this in a loop for five years. <laughs> right. No, I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, right, we need right. to get hardcore with these people. Because when you realize all the secret testing our government did yeah. and how they set up the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute and said they'd put stuff in vaccines, Bertrand Russell, all of them, they're doing it. Yeah. They are really doing it. All right, folks, it's up to you. We're taking action as well. We're all together. Join us in warning the parents out there. Uh, I'm going to warn people all the time I hear about other medical tyranny. We're going to start on a bunch of issues, getting people to tell their stories. That's how we're going to stop this evil. I'm Alex Jones signing off for the whole InfoWars crew. Please spread the word and get this video out to everyone you know, because truth is powerful. And as V for Vendetta says, ideas are bulletproof. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game-changer that also supports the Infowar.
we have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.